21 millimeter socket will take our wheel off. This one has a locking wheel lock on it. Take your wheel off. Well, the first thing that we're going to do before we do a brake job is we're going to push this piston back in the caliper so that it's seated all the way back. That way we can confirm the caliper is working properly, it's not frozen. And the proper way to do that is to open the bleeder screw. So I'm taking my protective boot off and an 8 millimeter wrench and I'm going to crack that bleeder screw just a little bit and I'm just going to bottom it out again. again just slightly because now I don't have to when I unbolt it it'll free break free fast. The two slider bolts are a 14 millimeter socket we're going to just take those off and then we can push back that caliper. Top one then the bottom one. Now I can take this caliper off and you'll see the two pistons. It's a dual piston system and I have a little tool that pushes the pistons back equally. If you don't have this tool you can use um, a pair of big channel lock pliers. Try to do two at the same time. You can utilize by using the old pad and a pry bar that way you get an even pressure on both pistons. So I'm just going to put a little pressure on it and then I'm going to open that bleeder screw. And the reason why you do that, in the old days we used to just leave the bleeder screw closed and push the pistons back. But with an ABS system, now that we have modules involved, we don't want the fluid going in reverse. It can cause more damage. Um, the odds are it might not happen, but if it does, we're not talking about $200, we're talking about thousands of dollars. So. I personally don't want to spend $1,000 on fixing a customer's car when I could have done it right. It's just better safe than sorry. Now we're just pushing that fluid out of that caliper, making sure that both pistons go back. Obviously I have a catch basin catching all this brake fluid. There's no restriction. I'm not forcing these pistons back. They go back nice and smooth. And that's what I'm looking for. And then I'll examine the caliper boots to confirm that the dust boots, there's no liquid coming out around the seals. So then we'll be good to go and no caliper will be needed. We can do just a regular brake job. And I'll close that back up. Just snug it. And I actually have a caliper hook that I like to use so I can get this caliper and hang it up out of the way. Now like I was saying, with that pushed back, I'm going to examine here. It's all nice and dry. There's no torn boots. Everything looks good. And I'll just take this caliper and hang it right up out of my way. You don't want it to hang down, put strain on that flex hose. So now we have the brake pads, and what these are called, little metal clips, are called anti-rattle clips. So I'm going to pop them off, and our brake set comes with the new ones, so we don't need these. We can discard them. And now a key thing to pay attention to before you take pads off is where are the indicators located. When the wheel rotates this way going down the road and the caliper is mounted in the front, you want the squealer indicator to be on the top. If the caliper was mounted in the back, you'd want it to be located on the bottom. So whoever just did this brake job last put the indicator on the bottom. So that is the wrong position. We want it on the top. So my new ones I'll be putting on the top. So now we're going to discard the caliper bracket. These are two bolts back here, and that's a 17 millimeter socket. And we'll get right in there and take those out. 17 millimeter socket, I'm going to break both these caliper bracket knuckle bolts.
And I'm just going to get my electric tool, make it go a little faster. Take the bracket down, put it aside. Now I'm going to take the rotor right off. And we're going to clean this hub up. You want this hub to have a clean surface for the new rotor to mount to. You can see all this corrosion. And if there is a rust, high rise spot of rust, that rotor is not sitting flush and it can actually wobble going down the road. And you'll actually get a brake pulsation. You can try a wire brush like this and take your time, maybe even some sandpaper. I have an actual wheel that has an air hose to it and it has an abrasive disc on it. It's not a metal grinder, it's actually a sandpaper surface like, a soft, per and we'll just clean that right off. Note, I'm not looking to get shiny silver because that will take metal off of it. So what I like to do with the surface is I'll put a never seize or um, anti seize on it. This one happens to be a copper. Copper's higher temp and where brakes are run at a higher temp. And that's what I'll put on there. Then I put the new rotor on. And to hold it in place, it's a good practice to take just two lug nuts and you can bottom them right out by hand. And that way when you're putting the pads on with the bracket, there's nothing that you're fighting with and not wobbling around. Now I'm going to turn it again so that I can really get to that front area. All right, so now we have the caliper and we're going to show you how to properly prepare this for the new brake pads and what to do. So you're going to get new tins right here and new anti-rattle clips and we're going to clean the sliders and I like to do one at a time so you're going to pinch this boot peel it back like that and then pull this right out and when this is exactly what we're looking for this is something that is needed this boot is de deteriorated it's no good and see how rusted that pin is that could have seized up very easily inside there so let's check the back pin here it's a little frozen. Get some pliers and see if we can get it to come out. There it is. Now, see how this pin's a solid pin? And this pin has this groove right here. There should be an O-ring in there and the rubber is wasted, it's gone. And the boot is torn. So what's going to happen with that? Water's going to get in there and this slider is going to seize up and it won't go back and forth. Like this is supposed to slide with pressure like that. And this will not come out and your pads will wear faster and wear off at an angle. And you could end up having the pad fall completely off and get middle to metal. And then you're right back in a boat where you need all parts again. So we're going to clean this up, check out the slider. If the slider's still good, I'm just going to get a boot kit with that O-ring. So I want to clean this hole out because I want to make sure that I get all of this out. So I'm going to put a little parts cleaner or brake clean in there. And I've got this little wire horn, horn brush like, and I'm just going to go in. And you can see that I just pulled out a lot of that broken rubber that was in there. And it's all stuck right in here too. So I'm going to get a small screwdriver, see if I can get all this out. You've got to make sure this is perfectly clean and free of any debris for this brake job to turn out properly. Use a wire wheel or wire brush and get all of this old paste off. You don't want that on there because you don't want it to mix. It gets old and tacky. So we want to make sure that's nice and clean. Now in most cases, on the top of the slider, top of the caliber bracket is where the one with the O-ring goes. So we know that's going to go on the top. And I'm going to get a boot kit, so I'm going to take this boot. It's in perfectly good shape, but I'm going to show you what to do 
if you're not going to replace the boots because they're in good shape. This one has no tears to it at all. So we're going to take a silicone paste or a caliper grease. That's what we're going to use. And we're going to put it right inside that boot. And I'm going to go all the way down inside that little spot. See if I can get more silicone in there. Then I'm going to paste, not heavily, just enough. So this flat sides to that, I don't know if you can see the flat sides, that's where you're going to, you can add a little bit extra and cake it up. But it's important to get silicone on the inside of this boot because that's where the future of the slider is going to get a lot of its lubrication. Take your slider and twist and turn and you're going to get air pockets up. You'll hear it popping and squeezing and I like to squeeze the boot, get the air out, push down, just work it. Make sure it goes all the way down. That's what we're looking for. And then pull it out. Make sure it moves good. That moves nice and smooth. It's perfect. And we're going to take these tins off. Just pull up on them. And we're going to clean the surface that this is on. I use the same little air tool that I use to clean the hub. You can use a wire brush, like this old throttle body one. The idea of getting rid of this rust, it's there for a reason. You want to get rid of it because it steel flakes and it'll actually start to push up. And if the flake gets on any there, it's going to push these pads up in and they're going to freeze what we call freezing in the bracket. When they get frozen in the bracket, they stop working and then you will have no brake, adequate brake stopping. Once again, these are in great shape, so I'm just trying to get rid of the surface rust. And I'll clean that. Now here comes the key to this situation. I will put a thin, thin layer of caliper grease or this silicone paste that I have on the bottom of the tins. I can't stress that enough, bottom. So where it meets the steel, that's where I'm putting this. Not on the top, where it meets the pads. I'm a believer in not doing that. The reason is, guess what? Dirt likes grease, right? Why would we want grease on the top of these sliders to collect and clog up the sliding part of it? If the tin is clean and there's nothing, no debris touching it, nothing to stick to it, shall I say, that's, you know, they're always gonna stay clean. To install these, make sure the wider tab goes to the back, thin tab goes to the front, just like you see how the steel is designed. And you want the keyway to stick on the outside, not on the inside, because this is where the rotor rides. Just place it down and push it down. That's exactly all you gotta do. Do the same to this side. So we're gonna pop these off, do the same exact thing. So we got our new boot. So how I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna install the boot first. And you see the thicker part of that rubber that's the thin and the double layer here. That's the one that goes in that groove. So I'm just going to push it down in there. Set it in. Make sure it goes all the way down in there. Looks good. It's nice and sealed all the way around. Doesn't pull off. Then I'm going to take in some new clean paste. And I'm just going to fill this boot up. I want to put it inside on these grooves. So it can later on, it can fill this as it goes back and forth. And here is that new little washer. It just goes right on. It's a flat piece of rubber. So I guess technically a flat O-ring. I'm gonna just coat this real lightly. I don't want globs of it on there because I want it to go back and forth and sit all the way down. Line it right up. So now we're just gonna put that new, put that pin down. Like I said, make it down, get that boot to seat, and work it back and forth. You want no movement, so if you feel like it, like you can hear this one, maybe. Hear that rattle? So I want to pick up that space with some s more slider grease. So I don't want it to be that dry. So that's how you can actually gauge how much you need to put on there. 
I've had them come in with massive brake noises and these pins were completely dry. And that will not work. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna put the bracket on and line up my two bolts. Always start them by hand. And I'm just gonna snug them up with my electric braids gun. Once again, that's a 17 millimeter socket. And now we're gonna to torque it to factory specs. So the factory torque specs for the caliper bracket to the knuckle is 77 foot pounds. And that's with a 17 millimeter socket. So you're gonna get these indicator clips and they're gonna go, like I talked about earlier, if the caliper is in the front and the wheel is spinning this way, you want the indicator at the top of the pad. So it's anti-rattle clip, but it's also an indicator clip. So you're gonna slide it on just like that. So this piece goes on the pad, push it down just like that, and it locks in, and this is the indicator. So we're going to line up the pad I like to put the bottom one on first at an angle maybe. Just get it so it can slide in there. And then collapse the top down in. Just like that. And then we'll put the inner one in, same thing. Just make sure that that anti-rattle clip is inside that middle bracket, not bent out. And then we're going to put on these springs. You have two holes on the top here, guided in that way, and two on the bottom. So the butterflies are gonna be facing the center, just like that. Make sure they're all the way in, and that gives a spring load on that, on the brake pads. Now we can get our caliper, Make sure your line's not twisted. Slide it right on. Get your two bolts. And this is a 14 millimeter socket. We're going to torque that to factory specs. So the caliper slider bolts to bracket are 25 foot pounds. So once they snug up, So I did the other side brake job. I'm ready to air bleed the brakes, a gravity bleed. I pumped the brakes up. So now the pads are seated in the calipers and the cylinders are filled with brake fluid. And because I opened the screws, the bleeder screws, I just want to do a gravity bleed. So I already did the passenger side. So now all I've got left to do is the driver's side. So basically you just want to have a catch bucket underneath. And you just want to make sure there's zero air pockets in there which there shouldn't be because when the bleed screw is open, you pushed back and then you closed it and then you pumped it up. That's not really inviting any air in there, but you have to be safe and confirm zero air. Once you're pretty sure, I'm just gonna close that up. 
And I'm going to clean the area with some parts cleaner. And then always replace the boot so that no road dirt or salt gets inside that bleeder screw. Now we're ready to put the wheel on. So we're going to take these lug nuts off that we put on to hold the rotor safe. And now we can grab our wheel and lift it up. With these, they're called a shank style lug nut. You gotta get those, line them up with the actual indent of the rim. So you want them to be centered perfectly before you even remotely start to tighten them. Always go in a crisscross or a star pattern. to lower it and do the torque. So with the torque wrench, you're gonna to torque the lug nuts in a star pattern. The torque specs for this car is 76 foot-pounds. 21 millimeter socket. Double check. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.